All right. Week six out of an eight week class. Oh my gosh. All right. So for everybody, the first thing I want to tell you is that squeaking noise is not me and it's not my chair. It's Oliver, my Yorkshire Terrier, because he's feeling parched. No, parched would be thirsty. He wants his dinner and he's going to have to wait. So I apologize if the squeaking gets in the way. I told you, please, thank you. Okay, all right. He's cute and that lets him get away with murder. All right, so um, the first thing I wanna tell you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start this and end this in the same way, which is it is now time to go to the AAPC website and complete the application for sitting for the CIC. Now is the time because then you want to send it in. It's going to take a couple of weeks to get approved and then you got to find your, you know, testing location and date and all of that stuff. And um, so it's going to take a while. You want to take the test as close to the end of this course as you can while everything is fresh in your mind, okay? In the meantime, as you're studying, I want you to make sure you jot down your questions and ask me, all right? Send me an email. Um, and I mean, not in what you're doing in the analysis, because that's good. And from what I'm seeing, it's helpful. But, um, you know, if, if you can look at something and logically say, okay, yes, I see this code is right and that code was wrong. But if you don't understand why this code was right and that code was wrong, then ask me and I'll explain it to you, okay? Because that understanding is what is gonna carry you through a successful career. And that's, that's what you're here for, right? Right, okay. So upon special request, the first thing I wanna talk about is seventh characters because I know this is confusing and I will tell you that it took me a long time to really figure it out in my head because of the way they have it set up, okay? So um, we're not going to go through all of the seventh characters that are available, especially in the injury and fractured section um, because uh, most of them are very self-explanatory, you know, malunion, non-union, delayed healing, whatever. That's, that's pretty very straightforward. But the biggest challenge that I have found um, that stu challenge students is A and D, the difference between an initial encounter and a subsequent encounter. So initial encounter is a patient who is receiving active treatment. They are under, they are in the treatment plan, okay? So a patient goes to see a doctor that starts the initial encounter, okay? The doctor evaluates, determines a diagnosis and creates a treatment plan. While we are within the treatment plan, that is an A, okay? Once the treatment plan is done and there's routine care continuing. So for example, we have a patient with a fracture. The fracture required a cast. Now the cast has come off and um, the physician still wants to see the patient maybe a couple of times after that. Um, maybe we're gonna continue on with therapy um, to make sure everything is working okay. We are officially in healing or recovery phase. That's gonna be a D. Now, I know this past week, or I guess it was last, yeah, last week, so week five, 
there was a case um, where the patient went for a consultation, a second opinion, okay? This was a second opinion would be a fresh eyes, let's have a new doctor do a new evaluation, see if he or she comes up with the same diagnosis. It is not within the original diagnosis or that treatment plan, but it is a, the creation of a potentially new treatment plan. So the seventh character would be an A. It's not the completion of active treatment. It's the potential of maybe an adjustment to the treatment plan, a difference in the treatment plan. Does that make sense? Okay, so then that would be an initial, it would still be the A, the initial encounter. It would still be an A. So first okay. time that doctor is seeing that patient, that doctor is still evaluating the situation, determining a diagnosis of his or her own, determining a treatment plan of his or her own. That's why you get a second opinion, okay? Is you want a fresh eye, you want fresh eyes to say, I don't know if this is right. I want fresh eyes. So that would be an A, okay? okay? Does that make sense? It does. Like the one from the week before made the one from this week confusing. That was, and I understand that. Yeah. And, and that's why I wanted to spend some time on this because it really is confusing, okay? So if you look at it as, as a package plan, okay, is the initial meeting, the diagnosis and the treatment plan is a package that's A. That's an A package, all right? You can't go to D until you finish A. You got to finish A first. So once the cast is off and, and maybe there's a, a little more, maybe we're going to put a bandage on, okay? Maybe we're not going to go right from the cast to naked back to normal. Maybe we're going to go a cast to a brace. All right, that would be subsequent. Physical therapy would be subsequent because you wouldn't go for recovery therapy until the treatment plan is done. Okay. Okay. Solid, clear. It's clear enough now. It, let me get another question where I have to put that answer in. We'll okay. See. <laughs> and, and yes, it's going to probably be on your multiple choice questions where you have one answer as the A and one answer as the B. So just ask yourself, was the original diagnosis and treatment plan completed? Okay. Um, and, and yes, it's, it is, it is confusing. It absolutely, I try, <laughs> I'm working on this research project with Johns Hopkins and I was trying to explain just this yesterday. We had a team meeting and I was trying to explain this to the, the doctor who's on our team. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I went, Never mind. I'll just tell you what the codes are. Well, <laughs> it's funny because it's confusing. Um, but yes, it's, it, so if you think of it in nature to maybe a fracture, for me, that, that's a very solid, easy plan of action and, and the phases of recovery until we're back to where we were. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. And in your uh, Let's Code It textbook that you got in coding, in coding class, um, this is in chapter 16, 16, okay? So you can, you can read it again with all the other elaborations of it. And then, of course, I'm always here to answer. 
All right. Now, the other thing um, that somebody emailed me, another student emailed me, um, having, ch and I know that several students have, over the course, have, have contacted me about the timing, the time for the tests in the class and how it just seems like there's not enough time. And um, there never is enough time. So let me just say that. Okay, but the point is that we put the time limitations on your weekly tests to help you get used to that clock ticking and get used to having not all the time in the world to get your answers done because that's how the certification exam is. And we tried to do it mathematically. So in other words, we kind of calculated how many minutes you have for each question on the actual certification exam and applied it here. So, but that doesn't necessarily mean A equals A, okay? Um, but I did want to share with you some tips that I came up with um, to see if this can help you be more efficient. If you are running out of time on these tests and time is a concern, um, then what you need to do, and, and if you're understanding all of the concepts and this is not what's getting in your way, then what that means is you need to become more efficient at determining the key points and determining the answers, okay? So the first thing that I want you to do is have a scrap of paper by your side, okay? Um, do you know if, are you allowed to, do they give you a little dry erase board or something to take notes? You cannot use scrap paper at, at the exam. You cannot? You cannot, but you can write in your book. Oh, okay. So you have and, a way of, of taking if notes. I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I think they let you use a highlighter. Oh, yes, they do let you use a yeah. highlighter in your code book, but, but no, I, I mean, in their book, in their test book, I think you can use a highlighter on the since it'll be oh, on paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I think good you can too. highlight. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's. Okay. I'm pretty sure you can use a highlighter too. take one. Okay. Take it one. might, it may depend on whoever's take a proctoring couple. the test. Yeah. Okay. Take a couple different colors. All right. Um, because you might want to use like yellow for diagnoses, pink for for procedures, okay, or yeah. something like that. But but and everybody has their own way of doing it. I find writing on the on the I use scrap paper on the side, but if you can't use scrap paper on the side, then jot it in the margin or maybe on a blank page in your CPT book or your code book, okay? But um jotting down as you're reading through a, a case study or even a question, um, write down those key points because that will save you time. It'll not only highlight it in your brain, you won't have to go back and say, well, was that acute or was that chronic or was that both? I can't remember. Well, if you wrote it down or you highlighted it, then you don't have to go through, spend a lot of time trying to find those words again, okay? And that's what we'll say, that, that will help save you work more efficiently. All right, next, remember, depending upon the question, you are focused on why, why, why does the patient need to be cared for? Those are your diagnosis codes. And then they may help with inclusive signs and symptoms or signs and symptoms that have to be coded separately. And then remember what was done to or for the patient, that's your procedure codes. So if you keep thinking about why and what, it will help you focus through and, and not be so distracted by the other information in the case study or in the question, the scenario, okay? 
re if if it's especially if it's a case study if it has any length to it go down and read the questions first all right because sometimes it may only ask you about diagnosis codes in which case you still need to pay attention to what procedures were done but in a different way because just remember diagnoses and procedures have to go together and what i have found is sometimes i noted a procedure was done and and i had skipped right over the reason for the procedure, which of course had to be coded to identify medical necessity for that procedure, okay? So you use that as your double check both ways, justification for what was done, what was done, what was done, justification for what was done, whatever way works for you, okay? But remember that that's two sides of that same coin. And then, of course, you know what to focus on if you've already looked at the questions that you're going to have to answer. Okay. Do you have tabs in your coding books? Now, I'm sure that this is something that I know this is something Ms. Johnson taught you about, but I want to make sure you have them on the books, on the manuals that you're going to take with you to the test, okay? These tabs in both books, CPT as well as HIC, um, as well as diagnosis, um, will help you get to where you want to go faster so you don't have to be flipping through pages and trying to find out where did I go? I went too far, okay? This way, zip right to the medicine section or zip right to, um, uh, orthopedics or, or muscles in diagnosis, whatever. Okay. Um, that's going to help you save time as well. Okay. So uh, this is not going to solve all of your time problems, but hopefully it will help you a little bit. And remember, you're looking for ways to teach yourself how to be more efficient as you're doing this. Now, there are companies that want their coders to code faster, 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 faster. All right. You know, I don't believe in that because I believe accuracy is the most important thing and fast time will come with it. And it also depends on what kind of cases that you are coding, right? I mean, if you're coding all op reports, it still depends on how detailed they are and, and how complex the surgery was, okay? They can still be very easy and quick to code, or you might have a whole bunch of different things going on there, okay? Um, you got to do this. You got to read the notes. It's, it's part of the job. And I have done consultations for doctor's offices where they were complaining that they couldn't make a decent amount of money from the insurance companies. And once I, I did the audit, I found out that it was their coder who was denying them money that they actually earned because I don't know. I don't know why, I don't know why, but I can tell you that she was missing coding things um, even things like modifiers, like prolonged um, procedure, okay? There was one hysterectomy, and these doctors, that was their specialty, was hysterectomies. But this particular case I read, um, the hysterectomy, they found that the uterus was attached to the patient's bladder on one side, and the um, intestine on another side. So they had to take extra time and special care in kind of carving off the uterus off of the bladder without damaging the bladder. And the same thing with, with the um, intestine. So this right there is obvious prolonged procedure with a very valid reason. And the coder never attached, never, never appended that, um, that, uh, modifier. So th the fact is, is that this is the job. 
And I don't want you so focused on time and hurry up, hurry up, hurry up that you get yourself all in a tizzy because this has to be mind over clock. It has to be mind over matter because this is brainiac work. This is not this is not just, oh, read the thing and look it up. And like you're looking up a phone number in a phone book, which you probably don't know what a phone book is because they don't really exist anymore, except one got delivered to my house the other day. I couldn't believe it. It was kind of small, yellow pages. But anyway, I, I'm rattling. The fact is, is that you have to find your own way to be more efficient at the very least just for the exam. And these tests that we're providing to you in this course is our way of doing that. We're trying to make sure that you are being prepped, not only for the concepts, for the details, for the information on whether the seventh character should be A or D, but also for the behaviors, the processes. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. It does. Good. Okay, um, Nikki, I don't know how to ask you this, but what am I looking at? What, what is your... I was yeah. thinking that too. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, she's yeah. on her way to work. Uh, is that, are you in your car? My, yeah, I'm on my way to work. Yeah, and my cat has turtles on it. No, so that's not a turtle that I'm looking yeah. at. It looks like maybe oh. a headrest or something. All right. right. There, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a headrest. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny though. That's, that's funny. I have a, the, the question I have is I understand, but it's just that when because I I take my time and I try to do it and go over it and make sure that I'm doing correct, but then time get away. And then I'm over time. And then all these points get taken off. So if I'm already not doing good on the test, then I got all these extra points taken off for being over time. So it's almost like it's worse than just stopping and getting a grade. Okay, and that's exactly why I'm talking about these things. So here's what I, I suggest is work more efficiently, work faster, pull out those diagnosis and figure out the codes. And then I want you to do this is I want you to back code. That's what I call back coding. All right. And what I mean by that is I want you to look up the code and and then match it to the question or the scenario in the case study. That one I was trying to do on the last one because you suggested that before. Okay. And At least I'm consistent. I, so one one thing I know I got wrong was I thought I put a zero, but I put an O um, on one. And the other one was um, I even went back and started looking in the um, the procedure, I started looking, make sure that I had the, the operation. So I even looked up the definition in the back of the book for the operation. Um, and I don't know, I, it's that clock gets me. Clock All right, do you, have, do you have tabs in your PCS book so that you I can get to those definitions quickly? I tap it the same as I tapped it before. Okay. So I go straight to the definition section. Okay, but remember something. Remember the definitions are also on the tables. The, yeah, I mean, at least for for the um, for the root operation term, they're they're repeated right there on the table. So you don't necessarily have to go to a separate place in the book. The reason why I went to separate is sometimes they give like an example of a type of 
Okay. Right. Yes, that's true. And that can be very and, helpful. And that uh, was helpful. <laughs> it is. Yes, I agree. I look back there also. Um, I, um, I, then the best thing I could do is say part of your study time should be reviewing the root operation terms and just reviewing that almost like a vocabulary list to get a little more familiar with them, okay? Because that will help you at least with some of them, you know, like excision is part of, a, of an organ, resection, the whole organ, extirpation, okay. removing a solid thing like a stone, okay? That, will, that may help you if you spend some time just studying the root operation terms and what they mean and getting it fixed in your head, at least, you know, some of them that that should help you reduce some of that time. Okay. okay. I found using that index at the front helps a whole lot because yes. it really Yes, that does as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that's but the thing when I when I go over time, then I'm already over time, and I'm already disgusted. I'm like, okay, I'm already gonna not do good on this. So it's already got twenty all right. points or more. Here's what. I, all right, here's what I want you to do is I want you to stop. <sighs> Stop worrying about the points, okay? Because I, you, you're a good coder, you're learning, you're doing this, it's okay. But when you sit for the actual national certification exam, it's a timed exam and it's a very full packed exam. So it's not like they give you five hours and most people only need three hours. It's like they give you five hours and most people need four hours and 59 and a half minutes maybe if not more, okay? I, I don't want you to get discouraged. I want you to keep, keep, keep studying. And like I said, I want you to review the, those uh, root operation terms like you were studying a vocabulary list in an, Anglo, in an in a language class, okay? okay. And I think that will help you be more comfortable with them and get a better sense of what they are. And then that's going to save you time going back and forth because that repetition is going to help you like, oh, I know what extirpation is. Oh, look, they removed a kidney stone. That's extirpation because they removed something solid. Okay. And that, that will only come with time with familiarity, with repetition, repetition, repetition. Okay. I have, an I have an opinion question. Please. For the time, for time that this hopefully would be something. Um, they put the um, case studies at the end of the national exam. Mm -hmm. I have almost thought about it might be easier to do those first because at least then if I'm on the you know, multiple choice ones, and I run out of time. Hey, I got one in four chance of getting it right. A, D, C. I could just <laughs> bubble in stuff, but you can't do that on a case study. You can't just write down codes. What? Do you yes. You okay? So my opinion. Um, how many case studies are there on the exam? Like Gosh, I can't, ten. I it was like ten or fifteen. Right. So 10 or 15 versus like 150 multiple choice questions? I don't think there was but 60 multiple choice questions. Oh, okay. All right. I think. I, and this is, you started it correctly, Jennifer. This is an opinion question because mm -hmm. I think different people work differently. I would suggest getting all of the multiple choice questions done first. Okay. Because you can get through 60 of those much faster 
and and yes you can you can determine a b c or d much faster so right. you can get that done and this way if you have one if you miss if you run out of time and miss one case study that's a lot fewer points than missing 15 multiple choice okay i hadn't thought of it that way okay okay um on that because you can flip back and forth. Once I got all the multiple choice done, I would go through the case studies and do what I perceive to be the easier case studies first. Again, okay. with the idea of I can do this, I get it done, that's done, all right? And then again, if you have like three that are really hard case studies, I mean, I don't want you to leave anything blank, but if you run out of time, three case studies is going to be a lot fewer points than, you know, 15 multiple choice. I got you. Okay. That's just my thinking. And as okay. long as you, but, uh, and, and while I'm at it, because I am a Gemini, I'll give you the other side of that, which is <laughs> the case studies require more thinking on your part. Do you want to use your, your, when you're fresher, then at the end of the test, you're going to be tired, more tired. Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, <laughs> you could do... 30 multiple choice, two cases, more multiple choice, more cases. You could do it like that. Um, I'm very good at options, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had not tried doing the case studies first, like on our tests for this class. I've been going through and doing all the multiple choice and then going back and doing the um, case studies because I found it easier to at least break them up. Uh -huh. And well, I had last, the, the one we just took, I did what you said about um, go through and do the easy ones and then go back and do the hard ones. I did that this time. Okay. I mean, I still, I, I came like, with, I like a minute. I had like a minute left. Oh. I was, I was proud of myself. Wow. Okay. So a minute under is a glorious accomplishment. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so that so that seems to work for you. Try that again this week and see see what happens. But I I think that I think it's it's a bit of a numbers game. Now the case studies are fill in the blank. Is that correct? Yes. On the real test. Okay. Yes. So it just it just seems to me that it would be. You want to look at the greatest opportunity to answer the largest number of questions before the bell rings. Okay. okay. So, um, and because you have the flexibility to go back and forth, then think about that as well as an option. Just be very careful with that fill in the bubble thing, you know? I mean, oh, yes. be careful. I've known students who want to skip a question and put the answers in the wrong place. And then that's the <laughs> end of it. Okay? You get to the end and it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm supposed to have I'm supposed to be on the last <laughs> question and I have five blanks extra. Yeah, there's none, none of that extra space left. So, OK, yeah. OK, so. That's why we're in this class is for you to be able to try these different methodologies, see what works for you. Um, I mean, yes, the the taking the test, analyzing the test, very, very important for your learning, your understanding and helping you get the right answer. But as you can see, this test taking stuff requires additional abilities and it, it requires additional um things from you. And um, it's important that you do what you can do to, to have, have it shine on your side of the street, you know? And I believe you can do this. I really do. Okay. 
All right. Any other questions, comments, worries, concerns? No, ma'am. That's all I had. <laughs> Just remember, time goes. Time is time. Time <laughs> is nonstop. All right. So you already know this. Um, your chapter reading is going to be on payer requirements. Just make sure you spend some extra time, um, uh, you know, checking out MIPS and the quality payment program from um, Medicare, because it's, I, I want to say it's new because it's new, but it's new since 2017 or 18. And, and, and it is new in the fact that we don't have all these years of stuff on it. Um, but if you need any help with that, let me know. I got a good good website, okay? Um, then you you know you know what you're doing here. The additional stuff um, that I shared with you is the Medicare coverage database that should have information on MIPS and VA health benefits. I I don't know that you're going to have that much on Tricare. Uh, occasionally they'll throw stuff in on that. Um, you know my. My watchword is never give up any points. So you don't give up any knowledge for any possible questions. But um, I think this should help prepare you without any problems. OK. OK. You can do this. You both you definitely you can do this. And I know it's scary and I know you're nervous. I've already signed up for my test on March 20th. So. <gasps> Oh, good. Okay, Nikki, you got to do that soon. Nikki. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> you got to sign up for your test. All right, I'm going to give you another couple of weeks because I know you're you're feeling uneasy about it. I was going to say, if you want to. We're waiting for the fresh nuggets to come out the grease. If you're to take the head of your truck, uh -huh. put it right behind the yellow pole. It's like pulling you back instead of pulling you forward. Okay. Mm -hmm. Long as I'm on work at time. So. <laughs> I'm trying to get something to eat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> then I thought I was having a stroke. Okay. <laughs> and then no. I get no, a it's sandwich that, now, and I'm good. <laughs> how, how much was it? Huh? No, you were supposed to. Um, How much is the test? Uh. Oh gosh, it was like three hundred three hundred dollars. Yeah, three hundred twenty five. Like you're, you're taking the test in March. I'm taking it March twentieth, but I don't think they have any more um, spots available in Columbia for then. So you got to wait till June if you want to do it in Columbia. Why Columbia? Do you live in Columbia, Nikki? We live Not in Sumter. Mm -hmm. Oh, when that oh, Florence, you go to Florence. I think they had a spot in Florence available. They still had spots in Florence. What books will I need? The your, PCS and the and your diagnosis, diagnosis. coding book. Yeah, but that's you don't need two. hick picks, right? Yeah, I, I think we checked. I that think that's the only two. I think that's the only two they'll let you take. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think. And Ms. Johnson and I checked that several times because I keep wanting you to have a hick picks book, and then they say no, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there your ICD-10 CM diagnosis code and your ICD-10 PCS procedure code hospital. Okay, are we going to need both of them? Be twenty twenty one. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I because um we didn't get a 2021 CM book this time. Okay, ask Ms. Johnson and see if she has one she could lend to you. I bought my own okay. Amazon. Or or maybe you could get one at the hospital. I'll I'll check. I'll check. I'll check. Okay. Okay. If you want to okay. come here to Orlando, I'll lend you mine. Oh God! I was say, don't tease if, me. if if you're not taking it the same day as me, you can borrow mine. Just know I got okay. notes wrote all of it. What a it. good friend she is. Okay, okay. I'll go ahead. I um. All right. I I I'll, I'll do it. Look, I, I'll <laughs> sign up for it for June. I gotta give me. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Thank you so much. Cause no, I gotta wait. To, I have some money to pay for it. Yeah, because you understand. also got to, you got to pay to join the AAPC too. See, uh, yeah, uh, single, you need, to go, you need to go online and get the info and yeah. um, 
And you know what? Maybe I'll do that and I'll post it in an announcement tomorrow or something. But, mm -hmm. um, you the know, student, it's the student rate. We can't use the student rate. The student rates for people who took the AAPC classes did it through the AAPC certification thing. Really? Oh, Not yeah. regular schools? Yeah. I couldn't. When? when I signed last summer, when I joined, I couldn't yeah. use it. I tell you, that's one thing I don't like about AAPC is they're a little money grubbing. Yeah, they're trying to make you, you use know, all of Maybe their... we should just have you sit for an AHEMA exam. It, it's way less money and their Thank students. You so much. They're, they're, what did you get? I got nuggets from, um, from Burger King. Yum. With fries? No. No fries. Nuggets. Ten piece nuggets are a dollar forty nine. Wow! <laughs> it's almost oh. like you 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 would insult them by not buying them, right? Yeah, I, that's what I thought. That's yeah. I agree with you. That's what I thought. I I was gonna pass it by. I had to make <laughs> no, Donald's. Yeah, that would be wrong. Not for a dollar forty nine. Wow. All right. <laughs> Enjoy your nuggets. Have a good night at work. Jennifer, be safe. Everybody, I'm here for you every day, seven days a week. And we'll do this, okay? We'll, we'll do this. You have our support and it, it'll happen, okay? I I'm signing up. I'm signing up um, Okay. in March. I'm going to sign up good. in March. Um, that's what I have the money. I good. got a teenager. Okay. <laughs> I know. Well, I know. And it's hard. I mean, you know, it's hard. Money, it's always, it's a lot of money, but it's an investment in your future. Okay. All right. Have a good night. I'm here for you. Thank you. All righty. Bye. Bye. Bye.